followers. This is John Demokes, a.k.a. Half Man, Half Cichlid. Welcome to third in a series of uh, tank tips, low nitrate strategies. After fighting the battle of nitrates for nearly 10 years, I have con now consistently achieved low nitrates. When I say low nitrates, uh, all my aquariums, except one, vary between zero and uh, 10, uh, 20 parts per million. I have one aquarium that runs from 10 to 30 parts per million that I'm still working on, and I'll talk about that in the video. For many of us, uh, we achieve this goal of low nitrates doing uh, quite an array of different approaches, many, I'm sure, different than what I do. So what I'm, what I'm doing here, what I'm rec recommending may be uh, different than what you're doing, but I just want to clarify and explain uh, what has worked and what I have finally settled on after my 10-year journey to have uh, clean, pristine water, uh, literally free of harmful substances, specifically proteins, nitrites and nitrates in my aquarium. So the purpose of this uh, video is to go through uh, five guiding principles that I use to keep my nitrates low and to, uh, how I, and to give you examples of how I actually deploy these five strategies with each of my five aquariums, which are quite different from a fish-only large cichlid to heavily planted aquariums with uh, smaller specimens. So the five guiding principles, without further ado, to keep low nitrates and uh, ammonia and other waste products low. Number one, aquarium substrate is a magnet for, for collecting, retaining uh, fish feces that are the major source of nitrates going into your aquarium system. Commercial fisheries discovered this years ago that fish feces on a dry weight basis are more than 50% ammonia waste. So you certainly want to remove them as quickly as possible. You want to construct your circulation, your filtration, so as to remove the feces and remove them from your, your filter as quickly as possible so that they don't add uh, to your uh, ammonia nitrate load. The second guiding principle is that actively growing plants, both immersed and underwater and immersed above water, is your best and most natural way to reducing uh, nitrates and many other uh, harmful substances in your aquarium for that matter. And uh, I use the word actively growing, but because uh, you know having two anubias plants growing one leaf per month is not going to be sufficient to consume considerable uh, waste products. My third guiding principle is that all approaches to denitrification, deep sand beds, uh, porous media like biohome, denitrifying products, they don't work. After, collabor after using the products myself, collaborating with others with a science background, uh, the, the evidence suggests that there's no good science behind why it should work in an aquarium system and uh, that there are no results that uh, are, uh, are significant in reducing uh, nitrates in your aquarium. Uh, the fourth guiding principle is that water changes are the shortest and probably a most effective route to removing a lot of pollutants from your aquarium. I do 80% uh, water changes on my aquariums, and I've somewhat automated the system to where you know, I'm essentially on a 500-gallon aquarium removing 80% of the pollutants in about an hour. Well, actually, 30 minutes to remove them, another 45 minutes to replace the water that's been pumped out. 
Lastly, I use foam media in all my filters, hang on back, uh, canisters, and sumps. You have, with foam media, the greatest surface area for growing beneficial bacteria. You have a tremendous dirt holding capacity to capture uh, nitrogen containing waste like, like feces and at least with a hang on back and with a, a uh, uh, sump, there's, that media is easily accessible and cleanable so you can get those uh, feces out of your system and not contributing to uh, uh, ammonia and nitrates in your aquarium. So now I'm going to take you on a tour of my five aquariums and I'm going to talk a little bit about each and what I do in order to keep the nitrates down in uh, each of those aquariums and uh, deploying the five guiding principles that I shared with you. Thank you. This is my 500 gallon acrylic uh, bowfront aquarium and as you can see I have uh, uh, some uh, big bruisers in here, Central American cichlids, uh, red giant garamis, and a lot of waste is uh, produced in this aquarium. The, the uh, principles and strategies I deploy include, I have a 110 gallon sump that's nearly exclusively foam and pot scrubbies. Uh, there is essentially no substrate in this aquarium, so I don't have a, a, a magnet collecting fish feces. Instead, I have bottom circulation that keeps uh, the waste, fish waste, suspended so until they get sucked into the, uh, the uh, sump. I do 80% water change every couple weeks. And last but not least, uh, for uh, uh, denitrification, I use an aquaponic grow bed, which I'll uh, uh, share with you in, a, in the next uh, shot. This is my aquaponic grow bed, 60 gallon, and uh, water from the 500 gallon is pumped through this bed at about uh, 600 gallons per hour to remove uh, any ammonia waste and, uh, and uh, nitrites. You can see it's mainly uh, pothos and different species of uh, philodendron. As the fish have grown, of course, I've had to add additional uh, denitrification capacity. And what I've done is, you can see, I'm stringing the uh, pothos to grow on top of the aquarium and around the other side again to uh, be able to consume and neutralize more and more nitrogen waste. This is my 340 gallon. Uh, again, some large cichlids. I have uh, a foam in my sump with a refugium. You can see I'm growing live plants. I do an 80% water change every couple weeks. Uh, and very importantly, there's essentially no Substrate, just a, uh, a bottom, rock-like bottom mat with a few stones on it to uh, have a realistic looking effect. This is my 200 uh, glass aquarium, perhaps my most successful aquarium in reducing uh, ammonia waste. You can see it's, it's extremely heavily planted. In fact, uh, the, the plants are so effective in reducing ammonia waste that I now have to add uh, CCAM nitrogen to this tank because these pl plants uh, strip out all the uh, ammonia and nitrate waste in the aquarium. Uh, again, I have uh, foam and an, and an HOB, hang on back filter, and, and uh, uh, I also have a large canister, Eon canister filter. There is no substrate. All the plants in here are either epiphytes, like Anubias, attached to stones, or uh, uh, the plants are planted in small pond baskets, in the case of crypts and uh, the Amazon uh, swords. 
I do a 50%, I only have to do a 50% water change on this aquarium uh, every uh, couple weeks, obviously, because uh, that's such a heavily uh, populated tank with uh, plants and uh, and uh, they're doing such a good job in keeping the uh, ammonia waste down. This is a new aquarium and one I love. It's a uh, 54 gallon corner bowfront aquarium. Uh, as you can see in this aquarium it's uh, heavily planted. Uh, I do a 50% water change twice a month. I've got a large uh, uh, foam uh, canister filter with uh, 30 ppi uh, foam. There is no substrate and I've got the bottom circulation set up so that any feces that falls on the bottom uh, moves and collects in a corner where I can quickly vacuum it away uh, once a week. Quickly, and thanks for sticking with me, this is my 44-gallon uh, uh, tall, you can see I have uh, angels in here and some Tanganyikans. Uh, in this tank, as in the last tank, it's uh, heavily planted. I have a canister filter with foam, and there is no substrate. And I have a separate video on how I get uh, the circulation to move the feces to the back corner where I can quickly, in a matter of five minutes, uh, vacuum them out on a weekly basis. So anyway, I hope uh, these examples were uh, helpful in terms of uh, learning what I do and a little bit about the five guiding principles uh, that I deploy in my five aquariums to uh, maximize the health and uh, uh, of my aquarium specimens. Thanks for uh, checking in and I look forward to your comments and uh, discussion.